boys and gals, lords and ladies, saints and sinners of every kind, welcome to Rise Up Jerusalem, I am Connor, and this week, someone asked me to talk about the film Me Before, the new movie starring that guy who played Finnick from The Hunger Games, and the chick from Game of Thrones, it's, I don't know, it's a weird cast, but somebody asked me to talk about it, but of course, I'm not going to go see that movie, uh, just because of all the controversy around it and the problems. So, the next worst thing. I read the plot, you know, looked at a trailer, and really, what I have to say about it is, it's perfect. It really is. It's absolutely perfect. The name, that is. Me Before You. Because the entire movie is really about selfishness. If you don't know the f- plot of the film, look it up on Wikipedia, do whatever you need to do. But it really comes down to this fact. The main character becomes in a wheelchair, Um, girl is invited to take care of him and try to convince him that life is worth living and the romantic love story that ensues. However, at the end, the guy still decides, you know what, I still want to die because I'm not myself anymore. So you guys can probably see what is wrong with this story, right? Completely, completely promoting euthanasia. Are we okay with this? No. As Catholics, we are 100% not okay with this. But I want to go past what everybody else is talking about, the, oh, euthanasia is bad sort of thing. I want to go into the next step, okay? I want to talk about the idea that this movie and other things promote of selfishness, of living for oneself. Because this entire film, like I said, is about this idea of a guy not being himself, And thinking, well, if I can't be my entire self, if I'm less than myself because I don't have use of my limbs, then what good am I? What use am I? I might as well just leave this earth. And it's such a sad thought and a sad thing. And the movie glorifies his decision. It doesn't make any sense to me. And it really shouldn't make any sense to any intelligent, sane person. Okay? The fact that we have life is amazing. Why would anyone want to throw it away? I understand deep depression. um, Maybe being, you know, helping out your family and saying, well, I'm just going to be a burden. I might as well go. No. No, 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 no. Big no. I don't understand how this makes sense. It's, it's that, that doesn't seem like selflessness to me. It sounds like it's, oh, well, I'm doing what's going to be better for others. No, 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 no. Obviously, if you're thinking this, you don't understand the idea of redemptive suffering. Okay, redemptive suffering is what Christ went through. Redemptive suffering is what we are urged to do. If you ever heard anyone say, offer it up for the souls in purgatory, offer something up for um, those who are persecuted, you know, offer those up for the souls of the dead. That is what this movie lacks, and that's what our culture lacks, is this idea of redemptive suffering. Redemptive suffering is so beautiful. Because of redemptive suffering, we're 100% able to partake in the crucifixion. Christ suffered the ultimate pain of death for us. Then should we repay it by, if we have issues in life, if there are struggles that make us feel less than ourselves, should we really take that and just say, no, you know what? I don't I don't think it's worth it. I really don't think my life's worth it. I'm going to die. No. No, 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 no. That is not joining in the crucifixion. Joining the crucifixion is enduring suffering for others' sake. What did Christ say? No one has greater love than this than he who lays down his life for a friend. Not he who is paralyzed and has problems and decides, well, people will be better off without me. No. No, 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 no. Very big no. This is the whole idea of, if you've ever heard the, uh, the, uh, Deep Canyon suicide theory, according to, um, philosophy, if you're a dangling, right, and you are on a cliff, right, and you see, if you and your friend are climbing up a rope to safety out of a canyon, and you notice that the rope above you and your friend is fraying, and you cut the line, killing yourself but saving your friend because you drop down, but you're the rope itself isn't afraid anymore, so your friend's able to come to safety, is that suicide? No, it's not, because the primary end is your friend's safety, not your death. You are doing it not because you want to die, but because you are trying to protect your friend. Now, it would seem like in the same regard, um, this whole story and a lot of other euthanasia cases would make sense in the ideology of, well, you know, they're just, they're, they're don't want to die, but it's going to be better for them. No, that's not how it works. In the Deep Canyon suicide theory, that primary end is saving someone else. In euthanasia, it's 9 out of 10 times not going to be, well, because um, others would be better without me. No, that means still, the primary end is your death. 
And in the first place, I don't understand how people can go through the idea of, well, I'm not 100% myself. I guess I am worthless. I might as well die. I'm sure someone listening to this video is going to be thinking, well, Connor, you know, what if you were paralyzed, huh? I mean, you play guitar, you play piano, you're a musician. What if you were paralyzed and you couldn't speak? You know, you can't even do these podcasts, can't talk anymore. What would you do? What if you got as bad as Stephen Hawkins, right? And you couldn't communicate very well at all. What are you? What would you do then? You would probably choose suicide, right? No. I don't understand how this seems morally acceptable. I, just, I, I don't understand. Is this whole thing because I have the understanding of what our primary purpose in life is? Because according to the second question in the Baltimore Catechism, it says, first question, who made me? Second question, why did God make me? God made me to know, love, and serve him and be happy with him in this world and the next. Know him, love him, and serve him. That gets into the whole argument of, well, you know, if are you really serving God if you can't really do much on earth? Yes, there's this thing called prayer. You could pray for people. How hard is that? I mean, take Mother Angelica. The woman was absolutely amazing. Just look up on YouTube. Pause this video right now. Look up one of her talks. She's an amazing woman. Her speaking was phenomenal. However, when she fell ill, was unable to speak for years, was she unhappy? No. She trusted God. And did it suck? Probably. Was it a problem, though, for her? No, because she understood that her primary end in life was to trust God, know him, love him, and serve him, so as to be happy with him in this world and the next. Know, love, and serve God. So this whole ideology behind, well, you know, if, if you're not fully yourself, then you might as well just go, is absolutely crazy. In the same regard, if I became a quadriplegic, would I have problems with it? Probably. If I also, on top of all that, was unable to speak, would I have problems? Probably. You know what I'd be doing? I'd be praying the rosary. And I'm sure if you ask a lot of people, they would say, well, I don't really want to think about this thing, this question, because it's too deep. It's too hard. It's a hard question to answer. What would you do if something that bad happened to you? What would you do? Well, take Ella Fretch. She's an 11-year-old, right? 11-year-old girl who became handicapped but she is one of the top wheelchair skaters. She's amazing. If you don't know what wheelchair skating is, imagine skateboarding, but with a wheelchair. Come on, it doesn't matter. And she had this amazing, amazing, amazing article that I'm linking in the description below about how, you know, yeah, she lost her legs, but they were just things. She straight up said that. She literally says, don't call me anything other than paralyzed. I am paralyzed. Something of me doesn't work. But does that degrade myself? No. See, the self of a person, the self-worth of a person does not depend entirely upon how much of you works. Every single one of us are broken either mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. There's something wrong with every single one of us. Does that mean that the perfect person would be someone who doesn't have any of those issues? No. Because if that perfect person was someone who had all those issues, then all of us are imperfect. And why don't we all just end it? Because if we're not perfect, what is living? If we're not ourselves and the best we can be, then why are we living? It doesn't make sense to say it in that regard. It doesn't make sense when you think about it in that light. See, it's a completely different thing. Going on an entire case and saying, well, if I can't have this back then I'm done. What's If I can't have these my limbs back, then, you know, really what worth is it? So in conclusion, this really all just comes down to selfishness will result in people making the bad decision. But if someone's thinking about something selflessly and offering things up and learning to offer things up, then the story goes instead of, well, me before you, then you and everyone else before me. Because the last will be first and the first will be last. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to hear other rants that I have done or other videos I have done, subscribe to this channel, like it, share it. Just enjoy it. It's a fun channel. I enjoy making these videos. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as it was in the beginning, it's now and never shall be. Rise up and live.